When I gave it my last blow, the floor crumbled before my eyes, revealing a single, deep tunnel under my house that seemed to go down slowly into earth. Months before, when I was finally able to get enough money to buy the house, the agent never mentioned there could be anything weird about it. And yet, here was the source of all my troubles for the past five months. She had told me about the creaking floors from the old, but according to her, very sturdy wood. About the area being somewhat strange at times, but great for raising a family. But never anything about a tunnel underneath my house that might sink a hole. When I first moved in, everything seemed perfect. It took the house about three days to start working its magic on me and filled me with paranoia. I had just finished having a date over and could see it have a future when we heard a huge crack from somewhere. It broke the mood completely, made her scurry away into the night, waving me away and refusing any help to get a ride home, and made me paranoid that somehow my house would split in two and become worthless. The nights after that, and for months now, were completely miserable. I would finish work, get home, throw everything on the couch and get in bed to try to get as much sleep as possible. Because every night at 11.30 p.m. there would be a massive crack with no origin that would wake me up, followed by constant noises like there was someone inside the house. It was the recipe for constant chills and sleepless nights. Eventually, I got an appointment with a psychotherapist who assured me my brain was doing fine. There was an appointment with the town's priest, who told me he would come and check on the house, but never did. And another one with a team of ghost hunters who left my house just before all the fun started because the crack at 11.30 was so loud that they felt like there was an earthquake and the house was about to fall apart on their heads. I was done, so I got my own paranormal investigation equipment and decided to do research for myself. I was not going to leave this house. I had no options left save for my parents' couch, again. I took two weeks off work and was ready to get my hands dirty. It was on the fourth day of investigating what felt like 24 hours that a piece of equipment I got, made to detect wiring in the walls, showed me something strange in the kitchen. Next to the fridge, where I knew from the blueprints there should be wiring, there seemed to be nothing. I stood there, searching my brain for logical explanations as 11.30 hit. I had never felt the ground shake so hard, even inside the house. A massive crack shook the entire place, but underneath my feet, suddenly, the floor felt like it had gone away, going soft and echoey like there was nothing underneath the tiles. And now, in front of my eyes, there was confirmation. Somehow, no one had informed me there was a tunnel there, but someone must have known. As much as I was scared, the exciting feeling of some unknown to explore was also very present. That and the fact that, depending on these tunnels, maybe some storage units could be dug on the sides and an opening could be made to the surface from the outside. Who knew? Maybe I could profit from this. The start of the tunnel was tall enough for me to just drop down and walk inside, even if I had to lower my head at first so there shouldn't be any problems further ahead. I picked up my gear, especially the hammer, stuffing its head into my pocket and the handle under my shirt, and slowly lowered myself into the hole. It was like I had just gone into a centrifuge, a strange tiny black hole that had been right under me the entire time. The sound of the air coming from my kitchen seemed muffled. I could barely hear my oven's clock beeping to announce it was midnight. It was harder to breathe. The air seemed heavier than I was used to, which would have been normal considering it was a closed hole this entire time. There was a slight whistle coming from somewhere inside the tunnels, so maybe there was a small opening somewhere. That was a good thing, right? I tried to look down with my naked eyes with no extra light apart from the kitchens, but it seemed to go about two meters ahead of me and then just die out, killed by the tunnel's darkness. I reached for my phone, pulled it out, and turned the flashlight on. The wall seemed wet and muddy, like there was no foundation to the house itself, only dirt underneath and the reason for the light disappearing ahead of me was clear now. Two meters ahead of me, the tunnel made a sudden turn. The walls were so dark that it made it seem like it was a never-ending pit, but it was just a turn. I walked up to it and gasped when I turned the corner. Ahead of me, the tunnel moved straight, 
going into the ground in a slow descent, but it was like a museum corridor. The dirt walls had holes in them, going down in a line on each side that looked like something was meant to be showing there, but someone didn't have the time to bring whatever it was meant to be exposed. I took the first step towards this small underground hallway, and lost sight of my kitchen for the first time. I got chills up my spine from the whistling coming down, running into me along with the slight breeze, and decided to step forward after checking my phone for service. All good. As I walked alone, the holes in the wall seemed more obviously to have been dug out by hand. There were small marks that seemed like claws when I looked closer, like maybe there was a mole infestation and they had dug this up. Maybe a little too perfect for moles though, but it seemed to have made me paranoid. I started imagining a massive mole coming down the tunnel and squashing me on its way out through my kitchen. I shook the stupid thoughts out of my head and kept heading deeper. Not too far ahead, I came up on a shaft. It was like a room that could fit three of me, with a poor attempt at arches going in four different directions. One I had just come through, and three others, all going in opposite directions. One of them, the one to my right, seemed to have some light coming through at the end. I was about to head there to have a look at what could be a hole to the top, when I started hearing some movement. It sounded like water coming through somewhere or just moving. Then, another crack, much smaller than the ones I kept hearing in my house. But it was the same kind of noise, followed by what seemed to be footsteps. I took a step back into the shaft, moved into one of the other corridors and looked through the opening into the tunnel with light. A shadow, probably as tall as me, seemed to be making its way into the hallways leading to me. My heart was pumping as hard as I've ever felt it. My mouth was going dry and my eyes wider, expecting to finally find out who was there, maybe living under my house. The shadow grew bigger and bigger, and then... nothing. The air was still empty. The footsteps stopped. The shadow slowly went away, and no one showed up. I was scared, debating in my head if I should go out and call the police to come get whoever this was, or if I should go have a look before. Suddenly, a voice sounded from behind me, a giggling whisper asking who this was. I jumped and ran forward without any hesitation and with my heart pounding. Without thinking, I stumbled into the lit up room, my lungs almost came out through my mouth, my heart almost stopped. Suddenly, my shoes were submerged in a red liquid. There was what seemed like a well in the middle of this small room with a big pipe with a valve aiming at it straight from above. At the far corner of the room there was a half-broken desk with a flickering lamp that I thought I'd lost in the move. There were some of my clothes, dirty on the floor, and when I recognized a pair of underwear, not completely full of red and brown stains, I realized what was on the floor. There were what looked like hundreds of dead rats, some fully decomposed, others almost fresh with holes in their bellies and intestines spilling out. There were other animals as well with the same kind of look, and the liquid I was stepping on was their blood and poop. I wanted to throw up, but I heard more footsteps echoing around the tunnels. I stepped around the well, over the hundreds of animal corpses and went through the carved out arch on the opposite end of the room. When I crossed it, my desperation came through. There were at least ten different possible ways to go, and I didn't know where any of them led. I took my phone out to try to call someone and... Tears got stuck in my eyes, hurting. I forgot the stupid flashlight on. My phone was dead. How could I have been so dumb? More footsteps and a voice now, almost screaming. I scrambled inside what looked like a small hub ran into one of the tunnels and just hoped for the best while I ran into the darkness. Eventually I ran into a wall. My ears rang, my lungs ached, my legs didn't want to stand up anymore and I just lay there, hoping that whoever or whatever was down there couldn't find me in their own maze in the dark. I was not that lucky. All of a sudden, out of the darkness, a hand grabbed me by my shoulder and yanked me away. I tried to claw at it with any strength I had left until I could see some light coming through again. 
I tried to look up to see who this was, and all I could see was a wrinkly, dirty hand and arm, some disheveled, strange hair at the top. By the time we were coming into the room again, I remembered. I brought my hammer, and it was still stuck in my clothes, head stuffed into my pocket. I tried to reach, but I was grabbed by a second hand and lifted into the air in the light, which hurt my eyes and made me close them for a second longer. Ah! This thing exclaimed. Person! It seemed happy. I opened my eyes, only to see this horrible, wrinkly man with black bits of things covering the corners of his mouth and white paint with slashes of red all over his face. He was tall, looked like death, bulging red eyes and a smile that was way too big for his skeleton thin face. He was smiling, but not at me. He was smiling because of me. Suddenly, he laughed to himself, pulled the destroyed fluffy rag he was wearing for pants up, smacked me hard enough to almost knock me out for a second and threw me into the well. Then he reached up for the valve on the pipe over my head and turned it. It screeched and shook so hard that I thought the world was about to end. It sounded like thunder and an earthquake mixed together, ready to crack the earth open and let it all drop on me. After some time, black water started pouring over my head with an intense smell of sewer and he started running his hands all over me. He was... washing me? He pulled my hair up, almost ripping it out, making me scream which made him in turn chuckle and scrubbed my neck all around. Then he turned off the valve with a smile and spun around towards the broken table. This was my chance, maybe my only chance. While he had his back towards me, I dislodged my hammer from under my clothes and held it under the liquid filling up the well up to my armpits. I waited for the right time, and when he turned to me again with this huge knife in his hand, I swung the hammer at his head as accurately and as hard as I could, my eyes half closed because of the shit going into them and the pain all over my body. I missed his head, but I hit his neck, sending him wailing against the wall. For a second, I stopped, and my breath was taken away by shock. I hadn't looked at the room properly before, but now, when I followed my target with my eyes, I could see there were holes in the walls just like the ones in the hallways. These ones, though, were occupied by human heads, going from left to right, each more decomposed than the other. The first thought that invaded my mind was the image of my head as one more of his museum. The second one was... Run. I climbed out of the well, my clothes heavy with all the trash chunks and water weighing it down. He was on the floor wailing and crying like a monstrous, massive, disgusting baby. That only made me hate him more. I tried to swing for the head again, but just before the hammer hit it, he covered it with his hand and howled when the hammer smashed it. I could hear his hand bones cracking under the hammer's iron head. I turned and ran for my life, still hearing him behind me, screeching and crying. I thought I still knew these tunnels, so I didn't hesitate. I ran to the end of the first corridor into the small shaft, straight to my left and started feeling the tunnel tilt upwards. That meant I was almost there. I ran faster, feeling the tunnel tighten up turned the corner and saw my way out and my beautiful kitchen sink right in front of the hole. I moved my foot towards my exit, and out of nowhere, a massive body ran into me and smashed my head against the wall. I could feel something warm rolling down the right side of my face when I heard him shouting the words stupid over and over again and pacing back and forth over me. Then, he grabbed me by the ankle, and started dragging me back inside. My vision was distorted, but I could tell my beautiful kitchen was slipping away. I waited to recover from the hit, then turned around and kicked his leg as hard as I could with my free foot. He stumbled forward in surprise, almost running headfirst into the wall and turned around, his face in this angry frown. I stumbled up, dove back in the tunnel towards my hammer grabbed it, and now I was done. I turned it in my hand, claw and up, 
and drove it as hard as I could into the monster's chin. I almost felt satisfaction when I heard him gurgling in his own blood on the floor until he went still, his face covered in red splashes. I took two breaths, only enough to let my shaky legs recover and make sure this thing was dead, and ran back to the entrance hall, pulling myself up into my kitchen and stumbling around the house, trying to find anything I could use to cover the hole and keep this thing inside. I couldn't find anything, so I decided to just leave go to a neighbor's house and use their phone to call the police. When I knocked at the neighbor's door and they opened up, the look on their faces was almost like they were seeing a dead man. I told them I needed the police and I explained as much as I could until the police arrived. Then I explained it to them and observed sitting on the ambulance's step while they ran into my house with a full squad to recover whoever or whatever it was that attacked me from the hole in my kitchen. The worst part is, somehow, they came out empty-handed. When I was informed, I made a decision. I didn't care if I had to go live in someone's room or my parents' living room again. I was not going into that house again by myself. It's funny, as I write this down to tell you guys about it, I'm in my new house, ten years later finally able to afford the new one after years of covering up the tunnels under my old house and selling it to someone else who might be more lucky with it this time around. It's funny because as I'm writing this, there is a small noise, like a clock ticking that keeps going around somewhere in my house. I guess I better go check what it is. Thank you so much for watching this video tonight. I hope you enjoyed this original creepy pasta. If you did, please let me know in the comments and add a like to the video. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with anyone you think might enjoy a bit of a sleepless night. I do one minute horror stories as shorts, which you might also enjoy, especially if you like a chill at night in bed. I hope you don't hear too many noises around the house tonight. And if you do, are you sure you locked all your doors?